All right, we are back with Everest K2 Week. Like I promised, we're gonna line up all of my Everest machines. We're gonna do a quick little show and tell. This was the first Everest machine that I got, the K2. And uh, this was an eBay machine and it was a little expensive, but you know, I didn't have one and I only heard bad things about them. So I was kind of weary, but I also like, you know what, I need to try this thing for myself. Um, and it worked out, I, I enjoyed it, but uh, my search continued for a better one because this one isn't the best. Um, I took the logo off of this to send it in to get it um, copied from, from somebody because we do need some logos. But we're gonna throw this in the camera stand here and we're gonna take a quick test of this. I got five machines, guys, so I'm gonna try to not make this a half hour video. Just a quick little demonstration of all these machines. Okay, yeah, it's a little stiff. Oh, I got ink on the page. I don't mind to distract you guys. It's a little stiff. Uh, it has a little bit of a, you know, yeah, this is, oh man, look at that. I need to fix that. Shift motion. Dun, dun, dun. I'm using scrap pieces of paper, guys. But yeah, it prints, prints nice. This one isn't as smooth and as flickable as the other one. It has like a little mush to it, but it was my first one and it's cool color. And uh, we'll, we'll keep this in the collection. We'll slide this over to the side here and we'll grab the next one. What's the next one that I got, guys? Oh yeah, this. The next machine I got was this Simpsons Everest. You guys might've seen the video on that. Now the Simpsons Everest, it's the same Everest as the other Everest, the K2. Internally, I put special spools in it because I think this one looks cool. So yeah, this is a, a good machine. Everything is cosmetically fine with this. It's got a nice keyboard. There's a couple little dings, but they all have them. So we're gonna slap this one into the camera stand up here and we're gonna continue on with our demo. There's K2. See how this one compares to the other one. Now this one I notice has a plastic paper guide, or card guide thing in the center there. Uh, we'll, we'll just see how that makes any difference. Oh. oh. Make sure we have color. This one's in a uh, Pica machine. It has the same kind of feel as the other Everest. A little vague, a little flat, but it types great. You can see it's getting bigger. Yeah, bigger, bigger, bigger is better. Is that what they say? Bigger is better. So we'll just we'll test that theory because the next machine that I got, yeah was this machine pretty blue everest k2 this one came from a gentleman in reno and he didn't have it set up for shipping he, he just wanted pickup only so i talked to him and we started discussing he never knew he didn't know how to do it and you know how to take a payment or anything and it was a little cumbersome to, to work the details out with this guy but in the end i ended up sending him a money order and at the same time he just sent the machine to me uh, on good faith and the two shipments crossed in the mail and we both got them on the same day so it worked out uh, the downside with this one let's see here this one he actually turned into a lamp if you could see the case it's got this hole in the top and uh, he did a good job on it but it did leave a nick in the top here where the lamp thing went down in there so i had to rescue this everest because uh, it didn't need to be a lamp it needed to be a typewriter again so this one is very special, the color, the lamp, and uh, the type. So we're gonna, we're gonna type on this one. I'll show you guys exactly what's going on here. All right, so we'll pull you down and we'll have a good look at this. Maybe you can see it from way back there. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. 
I mean, it's huge. That end is my fault. And you can see how the the letters are so large that they dip down into the dual, the, the bichrome ribbon. Uh, this is a bulletin style font or an orator. I don't know, orator if you're a selectric kind of guy. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely unique and unique typeface machines are pretty cool. Uh, everything in this machine is, you know, cleaned up too nice and it's got the wire the wire guide but you know it's an address they're getting better they're, they're typing a little bit better this one types great not like that one in the back that's the one i showed you guys a couple days ago this one is the, the pinnacle that i've got so far but that's another another video so we'll go on to the next one and i showed this one off too this is the Jolson Everest. Now this one is a shiny, glossy coat too, like the, the first Everest one that I got. And you could tell that when they went to the Jolson model for the department store or wherever they sold it, that things kind of went janky. Like the, the materials are a little, you know, it's just they, they try to cut a lot of costs to make it, I don't know, affordable for the consumer, but you can feel it. You can definitely feel it. This one has a really nice platen though. Yeah, this one does not feel great. Um, this one needs some work to it. it it's not, you know, it, it leaves a print. I can say that it does print you. It's nice and straight. This is a nylon. You can see I got cotton. This is also, <laughs> like you guys want to see a cotton versus nylon test. There you go. This is Baco cotton ribbon versus Baco nylon ribbon. And uh, once you go cotton, it's kind of hard to go back, guys, because look how freaking dark that is. That's some good dark print. But this is a test of the machine. This is the way it types. Or the lazy brown dog. It's, you know, it's words on a page. So we can take a look at it. But yeah, this one is not great, guys. If you tried an Everest and you, you had this one, you'd be like, eee. not very good. But we will try to tune it up and get it as good as we can get. And if we can't, then it's just going to be shelved. Or, you know, maybe we'll pass it along to somebody for, for a discount. Ugh. Okay. And that's it, guys. This is the, the pinnacle one that I got a couple days ago. The Everest machine, can you see both pieces? Probably not. It's like the Simpsons, it's the, the green, the, the, the moss green. But this one just feels, it's got the snap, it doesn't have any of the mush to it. I can't really type on it, I don't have any, you know, it's not set up, I just finished cleaning it. But I was thinking about taking this lid off of the, the Simpson because it, it is a perfect match. But then that, that cool Simpsons machine is, is not going to have a lid. And I guess we'll just trade back and forth. When I use this one, I'll borrow the Simpsons lid for it. But I would like to find original lid. But that's it, guys. That's my Everest K2 collection. And I've pulled all of them apart. And I've cleaned all of them. Some of them need more tuning than the others. But uh, we will get to that uh, Shortly, it's supposed to be a super cold winter, uh, negative 14 degrees next week, so it's going to be a lot of inside play. We're going to have a lot of time to work on that. So this video is getting kind of long, guys. I just wanted to show you what's up and how things are going with the K2s. So I hope you enjoyed it, and we will talk to you later. Bye.